Welcome, pre-calculus students. Today we're going to do angular displacement. Angular displacement and also angular velocity all in one video. Less than five minutes long. Here we go. Three revolutions. We're going to call this three revs from now on. Angular displacement is how, um, how far that is in radians. So let's look at it in degrees first. One revolution in degrees is 360 degrees. So three revolutions would just be three times 360, which if you've ever watched the X Games and they do a three spin, they call it a 1080, okay? A 1080 like on skateboards or something like that. Well, this is great. You can certainly do that and then convert it back into uh, radians if you wanted, but you don't actually have to because one revolution in radians is two pi. We noticed that from the unit circle you know, all the way out. If you spin it all the way around, it's one, um, one revolution is two pi. So three revolutions is just three times two pi, which is six pi. So three revolutions is six pi. Now it would be, it would make a ultra geeky X Games to say, dude, he did a six pi on the skateboard, right? No one would ever say that, but it's still uh, 10, 1080 or 1080 degrees. Um, sadly though, this isn't how you're going to see the answers in the back of the book. The way they're going to do it is six, and they're going to multiply this out times pi, 3.14, you can use the pi button, and uh, this is going to come out to be 18.8 .8 radians. Okay, so this would be your final answer, and this is what we're looking for here, 18.8 .8 radians. I have a better way to do this though. If your original problem looks like this, three revolutions, and it says find the angular displacement, what you do, absolute easiest way to do this, is take however many revolutions it is, whether it's three revolutions, 2.7 revolutions, whatever, and multiply it by whatever 2 pi is as a decimal, which is 6.28. That's 2 times 3.14. So 3 times 6.28 will get you uh, very, very close to what you're looking for, which is 18.8 .8 radians. Okay, so what have we learned here? If you, you take the number of revolutions, multiply it by 6.28, and bam, that gives you 18.8 .8 radians, or how far it you, the thing has spun around, which would be 6 pi. Well, it's the same as 6 pi, or... 1080 in degrees. It's important to understand how they all work together. Now, next problem, applying this into angular velocity, if we go back to the circle here for a second, we make ourselves a nice little circle, and um, we'll make a problem up. Now remember, velocity is usually some sort of distance, like in, in physics, it's distance or displacement over time. That's how far you went and how long it took you. Well, for this, the distance is going to be how far, how many degrees this thing spun around. Um, so it actually has a formula out there that looks like this. This is a Greek letter right there called omega. Omega. And it is theta over t. So this is the formula for angular velocity. That's what that Greek letter there means. This is omega, and it is angular velocity, which is the degree angle in radians divided by the time period. So usually answers um, to these will be in radians per second or radians per minute or something like that. So answers to these problems will usually look like that right there. Um, so let's actually look at a simple little problem here. We got 1.8 revolutions in nine seconds. You think about whatever it is, whether it's a car wheel or a grinding stone or a Ferris wheel or whatever, this thing here spins almost two times in nine seconds and you want to know what the angular velocity of that is. Here we go with the steps because you guys are big fans of steps. Step one in doing this. You take the 1.8 revolutions and you're going to multiply this just like we did, watch this, back here by 6.28. So I'm going to take this step, multiply this by 6.28, and 
and that is going to give me somewhere around 11.3 radians. Now, if we take this answer, which this, this right here, by the way, is equal to this theta right here. Okay, so that's where all these variables hook together. Um, now, step two, after we get that, um, we take 11.3 radians and divide it by the time interval, because that's theta over t. Um, the time interval was 9 seconds, so we'll put that on the bottom. And we just divide it top to bottom. 11.9, or 11.3 divided by 9 is one somewhere around 1.26 1.26 and then what unit would go on that radians per second excellent so now I got a problem I would like you to try it and as when I finish writing this I want you to hit the pause button if you're watching this video and I want you to try this here's a hundred revolutions we're going to call that revs, in 16 minutes. Okay, go ahead and hit the pause button now. All right, hopefully you pause that and you work this problem out. Step one, I'm not going to write the steps, but you would just take 100 revolutions times 6.28. That's what happens when I try to write small. And this will be 628 radians. And then you just divide this by the time interval, which is 16 minutes. Um, and when you put that all together, 628 radians by 16 minutes uh, will turn into 39.3, and that is rounded, radians per minute. And I noticed in the book, that's kind of okay, unless they ask you to, bless you, express that in like radians per second or something like that. But... Um, I think you're going to be all right doing it this way. This is angular displacement and angular velocity. Talk to you soon.